little box or the ego in there, you know, we just have to realize that that's our call for love. It's just this misperception where we just, wherever there seems to be a lack, you know, we just have to give the love that seems to be lacking, and then by getting it, we're aware that we have it. And that we, we're aware that we are it. And I remember I was watching this Spielberg movie years ago called Always, with Richard Dreyfuss, Holly Hunter. There's a line in that movie, which is something like, uh, the only pain we carry with us here is the love that we withhold. And I remember, I was watching that movie and I was like, wow, that really, that's a powerful line. Because when you think about it, we have so many opportunities every day to just extend that love. When somebody's calling out, it's like somebody seems to be on the surface, like attacking, or just angry, or have a grievance. And if you had a little, that small, still voice that's behind the mask, that's just saying, please remember, please remind me that I'm love. Please don't buy the appearance. You know, don't go for the appearance, just love me. You know, everybody's got this little voice inside that's going, love me, love me. And how good it feels when we extend the love and we don't buy into the, the irritations and the annoyances and the misperceptions of believing that they're, they're attacking us or that they're that they're clingy, or that they're needy, or all that surface stuff. When we just hear that call for love and we answer it, we feel so good. Because it's always our own call for love. It's like these, that's why our brothers and sisters are so important to us in this awakening. Because if properly perceived, we, we actually get ten, maybe hundreds of opportunities every week just to gladden ourselves, just to bring love into our awareness, if we don't fall for the trick that they're separate from us, that they want something from us, that they're demanding something from us. That's all part of the, the trick. Really, they just want to be loved. So, I, just, I think that's a great movie. I, I could feel this movie before it was made. <laughs> so, when it finally kind of I got a hold of it, I went, ah, oh, there it is. I can feel that one coming. So, what were your impressions? It even had San Francisco. <laughs> oh, the healing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right off the plane and here we are. Yeah. And Joe, you had something? Yeah, it's, uh, some feelings that come up with me watching it were definitely the whole the movie and the script and um, and also I felt a little bit like um, the lack that he was feeling, like trying to find contentment outside of himself. And this feeling of like, you know, although it's a beautiful love story, how they keep interchanging or meeting each other, and um, I don't know if you could call it fate or whatever, but it, um, I felt a little bit like he's trying to find contentment outside, you know, he's searching for something. That's one part of it, how I felt. But uh, I, I like how it, it really drove home the feeling to me like it's a script, a movie, you know, and you, you, do, you can have control of this movie in a way in the sense of your reactions and your thoughts and you know, just some of the things that come up with. Yeah, it's an interesting thing that the, that, uh, the man, the main character, Mr. Bain, is like the one got this idea, this, this thought of a, of a woman that he had a one night stand with and a son he ever, never knew, and then it plays out in him seeing this, like, romance. It's quite a vibrational connection these two have, yeah. because they, you know, at, at, at the beginning, you know, they have their moment <laughs> together, uh, and then they seem to drift apart, and then 
come back and they seem to not even connect at all and there's this deep vibrational connection which to me is very symbolic of how it works in this world that, that there's the love is underneath but there's such a, a terror of that love of really getting into it so yeah, you, on one hand you could say frustration of looking outside to find that soulmate or that partner the missing half or whatever that whole Cinderella prince kind of thing that's part of the ego's you know trickery on the other hand you could look at it as more like like we have this vibrational call to reunite with ourself and we're terrified of that and it plays out in relationships where it's like ships passing in the night you know we get these golden opportunities to really uh, connect and in fact I think there's a singer uh, Dan Fogelberg he had this song called Stolen Moments you know but it was kind of like in the time it takes us to look beyond the lies we could be sailing through each other's eyes <laughs> and in those stolen moments when fear is caught up come you see it never had to be this hard you know it's like it's that the stolen moments we have those instants, these little brief in instances in our life where we realize if we just drop the mask, we let down our guard. It's just an immense love. It's really our self-love. It's really knowing who we are and letting it be reflected back to us. But it's like that fear of that intimacy. It's not a fear of a, of a sexual intimacy. It's a fear of, you know, if I let me down my guard, what will happen? Will I burst into recognition of love or will I, I be hurt like, like it seems like in the past when we let our guard down, you know, when we seem to get torpedoed with unrequited love or something like that. So it, it does take a lot of faith to let down that, that guard. Kind of an interesting idea in the Course of Miracles that all you have to do is forgive one person completely. It's not a cumulative effect. You can do this with just one person. Think about that. If you could see one human being without the past, without those d d d the judgments about how they must be, first impressions based on how they look, you know, all those the, 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 the ego judgments that go on when you meet, when you see somebody, it already has got a little box and category for them. They're this way. But just imagine the, the immense power of being able to look upon one person with no past whatsoever. And that, that would be salvation. That would be self-realization, enlightenment. And I think some of us feel that. We've had partnerships or we've had people in our life where we feel there's like an immense potential there. Not to find something outside of ourselves that will complete us, but to give us the perfect forgiveness opportunity. To just cease judging them. And how beautiful they are. How beautiful everyone is when we don't judge it without this judgments from the past. So I've always felt this way. You know. And then I, I got to A Course in Miracles and, and Jesus says, you could receive vision. He's talking about the vision of Christ. He's talking about spiritual vision from a table. I'm thinking, table? I thought I had to forgive people. Mom, Dad, <laughs> Uncle Fred. <laughs> And Irma. Jesus says you could receive the vision of Christ from a table if you would withdraw all your ideas from the table. And instead of telling it what it is, let it tell you who you are. That's pretty powerful stuff. Now we're getting into some forgiveness. You could receive salvation and enlightenment from a table. But just think about that.